It's Press Pass with Jack Ebling, mid-Michigan spirited sports debate. Now let's get talking sports. Here's Jack. Great evening, mid-Michigan and beyond, and welcome to Press Pass on Fox 47. Michigan State and Michigan were outplayed but not outscored. Two top 10 teams were defeated yesterday. The Lions came as close to winning as a team can get. Tigers honored Miguel Cabrera, and the Ryder Cup is all red, white, and blue. To talk about that and more is Team 417, Jim Stark, Executive Director of the Michigan Sports Legacy Conservancy, talk radio veteran and weekly contributor to The Drive with Jack on the Spotlight Radio Network. How are you, Jim? Great, Jack. Um, busy, busy sports weekend. I think that we, we hoped it would come out in just about all the, the outcomes, but Michigan and Michigan State, despite poor games, did hang on for wins. We have talked about the misery index for the Detroit pro teams. Hard to imagine more fan misery in one afternoon than they got today at Comerica Park and Ford Field. In one, in one little square, a half mile, a lot of unhappy fans and, and, and fans that were anticipating something much better. That was a big thing because the Tigers had the bases loaded in the ninth inning. And, of course, we know what happened with the Lions. So there's a lot of up and down at those two venues. It could have been a pair of great wins. Could have put the Tigers in a tie for second place. And the Lions would have got them off the schneid, but it did not happen. Also want to welcome Tom Crawford. Blue Belly Tom, he's my broadcast partner for 19 and a half years. He's a regular contributor to the Wolverine.com and creator of the Crawford Podcasting Network. Tom, they say sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and uh, Michigan and Michigan State both got a dose of that yesterday. Yeah, they have, they were very flat in the second half, both teams. You know, I, I'm really frustrated dovetail off what Jim was talking about. This could have been a great weekend in the state of Michigan. Yeah. I mean, Michigan won, Michigan State won, Western Michigan won, Central Michigan won, Eastern Michigan won. All we were missing was the Lions. We would have had a clean sweep, and look what happened. Same old Lions. Very disappointing. I thought for a while that the Tigers were going to pull it out there in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, the base is loaded with one out, and uh, how much closer can you get than where the Lions were? And a bad call doesn't help. Uh, should have been a delay of game penalty. We're going to talk more about that later. But it raises all kinds of questions. If the Lions can play that well, does that mean there's going to be more of this and they're going to have a breakthrough soon? Or was this their best outing on the way to 0-17? And if that's the case, people are going to look back at this game a little bit different than 1970 when the Tom Dempsey kick uh, was obscured by the Lions' overall success. We'll be right back. Going green. Up next. Thank you. Enjoy our delicious two for five dollar select breakfast sandwiches. Bacon, egg and cheese biscuit, sausage McMuffin with egg and egg McMuffin. Breakfast just got a whole lot better. It's almost to familia. We're your friends. I am a Michigan State Trooper. I am a Michigan State Trooper. I am a Michigan State Trooper. If you're looking for a career you can be proud of. If you're looking to make a difference, the Michigan State Police need people like you. Do you have what it takes to change your community, to change your career, to change your life? Contact the Michigan State Police today to find out more. Call it a sense of purpose, a higher calling. At Dean Transportation, we call it our passion. It's simply who we are. 60 years of pioneering the best health and safety standards because safe student transportation is essential. We are hardworking folks, connecting children to learning, schools to our communities, and you to a better career. Want to make mid-Michigan a better place? We'll put you in the driver's seat. Join the Dean family today and help to connect our kids to brighter futures. 
Anyone who's had our chicken knows it's plump and juicy. What they may not know is that it's also 100% natural. All our chickens are certified humanely raised, no antibiotics, on a high quality diet of soy and grain. Why are they called tenders? They're called tenders because they come from the tenderloin to the breast, hand trimmed just for colors. It's not a strip or a finger, it is the true tenderloin. I'll put our chicken tenders up against anybody's. That's like my Granny Franklin used to make. That's outstanding, Craig. Welcome to Delicious. Welcome back to Press Pass here on Fox 47. It's time for our Going Green segment, brought to you by Graf Chevrolet and Graf Nissan on West Grand River in Okemos. With 107 years in the automobile business, they'll take great care of you, as they have on all seven of my leases and purchases. For a new or used vehicle, go green, go Graf. Well, Shirley back out to punt. There you see Jaden Reed with a 63-yard punt return to tie the game at 20. And it looked like the Spartans were going down to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Tom, despite what Reed and the Spartans say, uh, none of the trickery and execution would have mattered if one of Nebraska's two wildly erratic punters doesn't kick the ball 30 yards left of his target. How did punt right suddenly become punt wrong for the Cornhuskers? Well, punt wrong starts when you don't have a gunner on the left side of the field. The closest thing you got is some 200 or 300 pound lineman there trying to chase him down. Uh, that that was crazy play. I mean, I mean, you know, Michigan State, Jalen Naylor, you know, fakes like he's making a fair catch. That's all part of the deception, trying to deceive the punting team. Great strategy on Michigan State's part. Michigan State needed a play. Their offense was completely stuck in the mud. No first downs in the second half. Yeah. But, hey, there's no such thing as an ugly win. They got it done, and that's the mark of a good team. Jim Stark, have you ever seen a team have zero first downs in the third and fourth quarters, as the Spartans did last night, and still get the win? Certainly not at this level, Jack, but I want to echo what Tom said. I think this is a good sign for Michigan State because in past years or past games, they might have lost this game not having any first downs in the second half, but they figured out a way to win. They figured out a way to stay ahead, and that's a good sign for Spartan fans, not a negative one. Tom, uh, there you see the scores by quarter, and it looked like the Spartans were in deep trouble until they scored the last 10 points of the game. Uh, Kenneth Walker III, the nation's leading rusher, was held in check. He netted just 61 yards on 19 carries, but he did have a 23-yard wildcat scamper in overtime. And when you look at the number of broken tackles in FBS play this season, he's number one in the country. I guess stats can be deceptive. Well, yeah, and that's a great stat right there about, you know, punishing runners. And, you know, I, was, I watched this CBS Sports uh, college football show on Tuesday nights, and they have a panel, and they, they kind of – every week they talk about their Heisman leaders. And uh, two or three of these guys at a four-person panel had Kenneth Walker last week as their leading Heisman candidate, including Rick Neuheisel, who typically doesn't say nice about things about Big Ten players. <laughs> so, um, I, I, you know, I, Nebraska's a physical team, guys. They just are. This did not surprise me. Look how tough uh, Oklahoma had struggled to move the ball – against the Huskers. So uh, I thought Kenneth Walker, when, when it was money money time, made a play. He made the play, set him up to win, and onward for Michigan State. Tom, looking at a series that Nebraska still leads 9-3, to three, and that is the best record against Michigan State of any Big Ten team, how did the Spartans prevail when the Huskers led 26-12 to 12 in first down and 442 to 254 in total offense? Well, because, you know, part of it's Nebraska, you know, um, you know, making mistakes. I mean, uh, on the pick, on their first possession of the overtime, yeah, uh, that wideout made a bad, you know, he, he ran a bad route. Um, and I don't think it was Martinez's fault. And, but, uh, you know, and special teams go back to the punt return. I mean, Nebraska was dominating that second half. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't get home from Ann Arbor and, and, and uh, until into the second half, well in the second half. And all I saw was Nebraska, you know, moving the chains. 
it was amazing. But like we re reiterate all the time, I mean, you find a way to win and Michigan State will, will get better and they'll learn from this game and move forward and get ready for it, which I think will be a tough Western Kentucky team coming up. It was the first Michigan State punt return for a score in 10 years since yeah. Keyshawn Martin did that against Northwestern yeah. in 2011. And, Tom, I said last night that it was the biggest Michigan State special teams play since October 17th, 2015, a day that will live in infamy for a lot of people in Ann Arbor. You always find a way to work that infamous <laughs> moment into Literally every one of your shows, Jack. So I commend you. That's been creative. So kudos to you, Jack. <laughs> Jim, let's take another look at the Spartans' schedule. Uh, they are one win away from exceeding a four-and-a-half win Vegas projection as early as any team has in college football history. When do they suffer their first loss? Well, see, I like the next three games, Jack, with against West Kentucky, Rutgers, and Indiana. Uh, the Spartan fans aren't going to like this, but I really see the first loss coming uh, at, uh, uh, with Michigan coming into Spartan Stadium. But I just think that's going to be the first time they're going to lose. The next year, they're, they're, and it's going to be tough to keep winning, especially uh, with Michigan being on their role they've been on. So that's the first loss I see. Tom, wouldn't it be wild if indeed the last day of the regular season – Two undefeated teams, but it was Penn State and Michigan State in Spartans. <laughs> no. We'll be right back, out of the blue, up next. Call it a sense of purpose, a higher calling. At Dean Transportation, we call it our passion. It's simply who we are. 60 years of pioneering the best health and safety standards because safe student transportation is essential. We are hardworking folks, connecting children to learning, schools to our communities, and you to a better career. Want to make mid-Michigan a better place? We'll put you in the driver's seat. Join the Dean family today and help to connect our kids to brighter futures. When you take a look inside Dart Bank, you'll find a banking experience like no other. You'll find that each of our banking offices are made of local people making local decisions. Even through these challenging times, our teams and lobbyists stayed open, ready to help you through all your banking and mortgage needs when you needed us most. So if you're looking to upgrade where you bank, we invite you to come see our DART difference. After all, we've been doing this for over 94 years. DART Bank, for what matters most. Anyone who's had our chicken knows it's plump and juicy. What they may not know is that it's also 100% natural. All our chickens are certified humanely raised, no antibiotics, on a high quality diet of soy and grain. Why are they called tenders? They're called tenders because they come from the tenderloin to the breast, hand trimmed just for colors. It's not a strip or a finger, it is the true tenderloin. I'll put our chicken tenders up against anybody's. That's like my Granny Franklin used to make. That's outstanding, Craig. Welcome to Delicious. This city could use all the heroes it could get. 911, all new Mondays on Fox. Let MSU FCU drive down your payment with a low rate auto loan. Enjoy flexible terms and rates as low as 1.99% APR. Visit msufcu.org to refinance today. Getting vaccinated is an individual decision, and it's an important one, but it's one you don't have to make by yourself. There are doctors and pharmacists in your communities who want to talk to you about the things that are concerning you, and we're here for you to help you answer those questions. So as a fourth generation pharmacist and business owner, I live in this community. I grew up in this community. I would never, as a healthcare professional, recommend you get something that I didn't feel was safe for you. It's your decision. It's safe. It's time. Hi, Bob Hoffman. Join me every Friday night as I take you across mid-Michigan and introduce you to people making a difference in the lives of others. Watch Good Neighbors with Bob Hoffman, Friday, only on Fox 47 News at 7. Welcome back to Press Pass here on Fox 47. It's time for our Out of the Blue segment, talking Michigan Wolverines. Brought to you by nobody. There you see Rutgers, one of its many fourth down failures yesterday. Uh, Tom, 
The Scarlet Knights dominated the second half, but couldn't get out of their own way for the second straight year against Michigan. Did the better team win yesterday in Ann Arbor? Uh, well, uh, when you look at the second half, no. I mean, like 231 total yards in the second half for Rutgers to 42 for Michigan. I mean, they ran the ball 152 to 20 or 35. Uh, I, I'm looking at the second half. I mean, 14 first downs to two uh, and 10 points to nothing in, in, the, in the second half. I'm totally looking at game as a second half perspective. You make your changes at halftime. Very, very uh, disappointing performance for Michigan. I think it's an indicator that more losses loom ahead. I'm, I'm taking on this season in the moment, Jack, and I don't like this football team right now. The Wolverines, I just they, they uh, and I think JJ McCarthy might be the answer before this is over with, because Cade McNamara has some happy feet, and I know he didn't turn the ball over, but I think the other guy should be, you know, given an opportunity. Jim Stark, as we take a look at the scores by quarters yesterday, uh, Rutgers got six more first downs. 77 more yards of offense and 84 more yards on the ground. What did we learn about these teams? Well, certainly Rutgers learned they can play in the big house against one of the toughest crowds anywhere in the Big Ten. And I think everybody better pay attention to the fact that all the teams in the Big Ten that normally are the also-rans, the Maryland's and the Rutgers, are, are not, they're, they're competitive this year. Tom, uh, the Wolverines still have not turned the ball over, and that is an amazing stat after four games. Watching Wisconsin's Graham Mertz play catch with Notre Dame's DBs, uh, does that takeaway disparity continue in Madison? Uh, that would mean good things for Michigan. Yeah, but if Michigan doesn't turn people over, I mean, last week they got their first interception in, I think, a couple of years uh, uh, with Jamon Green. Uh, you know, against NIU, and and they got a big turnover late, the fumble that saved the day. Um, but um, I, I'm I'm really concerned about Michigan's inability of their defense to turn people over because, and and then their offense has to function more. I mean, they're I mean four consecutive three and outs. I mean, Michigan's defense just faded. They were they were gassed, and R Rutgers was just doing you know kind of. Simple plays, simple, you know, simple outs, simple slants and shallow crossers. And they got the running game going. They had it cooking. And and defensively, they put eight in the box. And that's the template to stop Michigan. You put it, load up the box and make them throw. And you got a good chance of beating them. Well, when you think about what Jim Harbaugh wants to do with this power running game, the fact that Cade McNamara is not making the big mistake that's giving Michigan a chance to win on the ground and with its defense and did just enough yesterday to do that. Uh, Jim, I want to take a look at U of M's schedule for this season. How many games do the Wolverines win? You've already said they're going to win on October 30th. And I think they will. Well, you know, I, I think their first loss is going to come next week. I think going to Wisconsin. Wisconsin is going to be a big uh, test for them. I think it's a tough place to play. Uh, as Tom said, uh, they're having some troubles uh, with consistency on offense. So I think it's going to be a very difficult week. And I think they're going to get their first loss in Wisconsin. Unfortunately, they play in the weaker uh, division this year, not the stronger West. So I see them uh, doing pretty well. But I see them finish up 10-2. and two. I think they're going to have uh, this loss and maybe one more somewhere, either uh, – uh, Penn State, hopefully not the final game. I think they want to get over that that Ohio State uh, challenge. But I think 10-2 is going to be their, their regular season. But I, I think this game against Wisconsin is going to be the first loss. The Michigan over-under in Vegas was 7.5 initially and uh, then went up to 8 after the first couple of weeks. But when you look at uh, where Michigan is right now, haven't had a road game yet, and that's what a lot of people want to see. We'll be right back. We'll talk about a new winningest coach in Notre Dame football history. Don't live a common life. March to a different beat. Dance your own dance. Be bold. Be purposeful. Stand up for what's right. You're here for a reason. So use your God-given gifts to serve your neighbors. Because you know that all people deserve dignity and love. When you live life like that, it's uncommon. Concordia University, Ann Arbor. Live uncommon. What's the big deal about a first quarter kickoff? Well, 
everything. If you're on FanDuel Sportsbook, make football more than a game of inches. Make kickers feel like quarterbacks. Every touchback feel like a touchdown. And every small moment like this one, a chance to win big. Make every moment more this NFL season with FanDuel Sportsbook. New customers get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. Fox 47 Morning News with Michaela Temple. Weekdays from 6 to 9 a.m. At Graf Chevrolet in Oakmouth, you'll always get a great deal on a huge selection of high-quality used cars and trucks. But you'll also get something else. Peace of mind. Every Graf used vehicle purchase comes with up to six oil changes for the first two years of ownership. We'll also give you a free tire rotation with every other oil change. Always a great selection of used vehicles starting from $1,000 and up. Check them out at grafochemist.com. Lower your cost of ownership with our Peace of Mind program. Only at Graf Chevrolet in Okemos. Woody's Oasis, your healthy alternative to fast food. Woody's has the best Mediterranean food in town. Stop and see Chuck and Delita. They'll make you feel like family. Their friendly, knowledgeable staff is always willing to help. Hi, how are Hi. you doing today? Do you want to do the homemade bread with that or did you want to do the thin bread as a side? They'll be sure to put a smile on your face. And as lifelong supporters of MSU Athletics, you never know who might stop by. Eat Woody's and live longer. Coulda, shoulda, Woody's. Woody's Oasis on Trowbridge Road, right next to campus. Call it a sense of purpose, a higher calling. At Dean Transportation, we call it our passion. It's simply who we are. 60 years of pioneering the best health and safety standards because safe student transportation is essential. We are hardworking folks, connecting children to learning, schools to our communities, and you to a better career. Want to make mid-Michigan a better place? We'll put you in the driver's seat. Join the Dean family today and help to connect our kids to brighter futures. Welcome back to Press Pass here on Fox 47. It's time for the big picture, brought to you by Dean Transportation. Dean is hiring caring and dependable people as school bus drivers in many Michigan markets. Be a hero in your community and safely transport children to and from school with Dean. For more information and to apply, visit deantransportation.com slash jobs. That's deantransportation.com slash jobs. Yesterday at Soldier Field in Chicago, Brian Kelly became the all-time winningest Notre Dame coach, surpassing Newt Rockney's mark. And if you think about Rockney, Frank Leahy, Air Farsigan, Lou Holtz, very few people would think that Brian Kelly is the winningest coach, or as he likes to say, the only one without a national championship. Uh, Tom, when you think about the Irish yesterday, they were in trouble. They were down 13 to 10 and then scored the last 31 points of the game. Despite the heroics of third string quarterback Drew Pine, didn't look like a great Notre Dame performance until Wisconsin started cooperating. Uh, as we look at the Big Ten scores from week four, what stands out to you? Well, I mean, that game stands out. Because I'm watching that game in the box, and I just flipped on a kickoff return. There you go with a special team play. Yeah. can be decision Kyrie. I mean, Minnesota, I was raving about the Gophers after that convincing win at Colorado, just dominating Colorado. And then Bowling Green in the MAC comes and beats them. And Minneapolis, 14 to 10. First time Minnesota lost to a MAC team, I think, in 10 years or a group of five team. That one sticks out in my mind. And, it, you know, the way Western Kentucky – competed with Indiana, should have won that game. Yes. There's another one. There, there's a red flag for Michigan State. Yeah. And I think Michigan State's not going to be, you know, fat and sassy here coming off this near loss. Watch out for Western Kentucky. That's another group of five yeah. that has a way of beating the big boys. Yeah, and I think Michigan State is an eight or eight and a half point favorite in that game. Not as much as you would expect right. from a team that's ranked where the Spartans are now. But when you look at those scores, there were a few others. Uh, Northwestern, uh, I thought that was an interesting score. And uh, Iowa was behind at the half against Colorado State. Right. Uh, yeah. So there were a couple of other head scratchers there, and the Big Ten did not acquit itself particularly well. No, no. And, and it was, all this does is tell us, Jim and Jack, that that um, we don't know what's going on in college football right now. I mean, we really don't know. And, I mean, you really you think somebody's good and they're not so good, just like Michigan, just like Michigan State and their second-half performances. So you're going to have to wait to the five- or six-week line of this season 
before you can really get a true evaluation of who's good and who's not good, other than the, no, the normal suspects, Alabama yeah. and Georgia. Jim, uh, let's take a look at the Big Ten standings. And did you ever think that the preseason division favorites, Wisconsin and Ohio State, would have three more losses than Iowa, Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State, and Maryland combined? Well, well, I think this is, is to touch on uh, Tom's point, this is a, a different uh, college football scene now with the, with the transfer portal, with all the changes. You can't tell before the season starts who's going to be good and who's going to be uh, uh, not, not as good because you don't have the, the, the longevity of these teams you had to look at in the past year. So I think every year is going to be like this now. It's going to always be starting over every year. But the predictions the pre- uh, before the season starts, they're going to become less and less accurate. And, guys, this might have been the last time we see Scott Frost in Spartan Stadium. (laughs) Now they have Michigan coming up. They have Ohio State. uh, They have Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin. They've got a lot of tough challenges ahead. And the people out there are starting to say, this isn't exactly what we bought. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. Tom, taking a look at next week's matchups, what jumps out to you besides the Wolverines' double payback trip to Camp Randall? Well, the Iowa-Maryland game is really intriguing. I mean, yeah. that, I mean, let's see, Iowa's offense. I mean, we struggled with Colorado State at home at Kinnick. I mean, watch out for that Maryland team. We're going to really find out how good they are. I think Nebraska's going to get real healthy, real beaten, beaten down on Northwestern. And – you know, other than that, I, you know, I talked about the Western Kentucky game, but Indiana, Penn State, I think Indiana's going to start fading right now. And I think Penn State's going to jump on the Hoosiers in that, in that matchup. I'm curious about Ohio State at Rutgers. And if Rutgers can play the way it did in the second half, you yep. know that Ohio State's defense against a, a reasonable offense can struggle. Tom, I want to take a look at the new AP Top 25. What surprises you, and what would you change? Uh, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to change. I take Michigan at 14 and put them about 24th. Um, wow. uh, and, and the other thing is Wake Forest. I saw them the other night. They're good. Yeah. I mean, the a- Clemson's not. You know, they, they're out of this thing now, and they might just fold to 10 here. Watch Wake Forest to win the ACC. I think in, in that matchup, and um, you know, Oregon seems to be a pretty good. You know, they're they're a good team. Um, I think they're where they're supposed to be. And Ohio State, I, I, I'm going to double down on what you just said. Maybe that's upset alert for the Buckeyes when they go to Piscataway next week. Tom, I actually had Wake about 10 spots higher on my AP ballot. I, Paul, uh, they said, are you sure? I said, I'm sure. Well, we'll be right back. We'll look at the Lions in a close call next. When you take a look inside Dart Bank, you'll find a banking experience like no other. You'll find that each of our banking offices are made of local people making local decisions. Even through these challenging times, our teams and lobbies stayed open, ready to help you through all your banking and mortgage needs when you needed us most. So if you're looking to upgrade where you bank, we invite you to come see our Dart difference. After all, we've been doing this for over 94 years. Dart Bank, for what matters most. At Graf Chevrolet in Oakness, you'll always get a great deal on a huge selection of high quality used cars and trucks. But you'll also get something else, peace of mind. Every Graf used vehicle purchase comes with up to six oil changes for the first two years of ownership. We'll also give you a free tire rotation with every other oil change. Always a great selection of used vehicles starting from $1,000 and up. Check them out at grafochemist.com. Lower your cost of ownership with our peace of mind program. Only at Graf Chevrolet in Oakness. It's another fall Friday night, and your kids should be playing playing high school football. It's a fun game, and it's safer than ever. It's safe because the rules, the coaching, and the equipment are better than ever before. As a result, serious injuries are at an all-time low. Seriously. And build strong schools, lifetime memories, and tomorrow's community leaders. And it's mother-approved. It's a great game, and we want to teach it to your kids. Don't miss The Masked Singer, all new Wednesdays at 8, 7 central on Fox. 
Whether your insurance need is for business, farm and agriculture, or protecting your home and auto, experience the benefit of a local agent who cares about you with the David Chapman Agency and Auto Owners Insurance. Visit davidchapmanagency.com. I'd say the most common concerns are, is it safe? How is this going to affect my body? How is this going to affect um, the rest of my health moving forward? I always tell people that these vaccines are studied to be safe and effective. They have gone through a rigorous process in order to make sure that they are safe and effective. I would never, as a healthcare professional, recommend you get something that I didn't feel was safe for you. It's your decision. It's safe. It's time. The other big story this year, your heart. During the pandemic, death from heart attacks doubled. At Henry Ford, we're all for making heart health the headline again. Find out your own heart risk by taking our Get Heart Smart quiz. Welcome back to Press Pass here on Fox 47. It's time for our Law of the Jungle segment, brought to you by Woody's Oasis on Trowbridge Road, your healthy alternative to fast food. Eat Woody's and live longer. Stop and see Chuck, Delita, and their terrific staff for the best in Mediterranean food. That's why I'm there every week. Got it up. That's it. Agnew. Brings it out of the end zone. Agnew. Still running. Agnew. There you see ex-Lion Jamal Agnew after the longest run in NFL history. 109 yards. Amazing for Jacksonville. And appropriately, it's Matt Prater's kick, so lion on lion crime there. But when you think about two NFL records for distance set in the same day, uh, you also had the situation at Ford Field and Justin Tucker coming out for a 66 <coughs> yard field goal. Some people starting to chuckle at that. Next thing you know, that ball is bouncing off the crossbar. Uh, Jim, we've waited as long as we can to talk about the uh, Lions latest uh, misery. How would you rank Tucker's NFL record field goal as a crushing blow to fans who should be used to all that by now? Well, they, they seem to find different different ways to do it, Jack. If it's not an interception or a Hail Mary pass, now it's a kick. And this echoes, of course, what we talked about earlier, which was the kick back in 1970 uh, down in New Orleans uh, with, with a, the then record kick of 63 yards. Well, it's another record kick. It, to, to, get, to win the game, they had to give a record kick. Only the Lions would have to put themselves in that position where they, they'd have to have a record kick and they get it at home with a ball hitting the crossbar and then falling over. Could you want more drama the other way? Uh, no, you couldn't. And, Tom, the fact that that ball bounced high off the crossbar, it's like exp extending uh, Detroit's misery in the cruelest way possible. But the play before that, uh, the play clock expired a full two seconds before that ball was snapped. And if there had been a five-yard penalty, as the CBS crew pointed out, and Gene Steratore uh, confirmed that would have been a 71 yard kick and I don't even think Justin Tucker was capable of that how did they miss that I don't, I don't know how they miss it you know I mean this is the highest level of, of, of football that we're dealing with right now this is the NFL this is the greatest show on earth and how you can screw something up like that it, it remains to be seen I'm going to double down on what Jim said about that Dempsey kick this was this was just a heart wrencher but the key thing for the Lions, guys, is that, I, you know, that Lions team in 71 five in a row. I'm wondering, you know, Dan Campbell's doing a heck of a job with his team. But I'm looking at the schedule, and I, th this could be a three-win team, a two-win team. That could be an absolute gut-wrencher, uh, hit the jugular on this team, and they might just start continuing to lose because that, that, that could have been a turning point, defining part of the season, how good this Lions team is going to be. It's not necessarily a playoff team. We knew that going in. But that six win or seven win, I don't think they're going to make that right now. Jim, uh, the best news for the Lions might be that they're still playing in the NFC North. 
Uh, even so, are they destined to finish last again? Oh, I, I don't see any way around it, Jack. They, they're too, they're too uh, inconsistent offense, defense, so one half this, one half that. And this today, as Tom said, is a heartbreaker. This could spur them on to be better or it could take the wind out of their sails for uh, several games. But let's face it, until Dan Campbell figures out some more consistency, this is not a, a winning team. Uh, I want to take another look at the Lions schedule, guys. And uh, Jim... When does Detroit smile after 60 minutes of play? And will Campbell's team be the last of the six winless teams to get a W? Well, I'll tell you, I, I, I think it's tough to win in, in their conference on the road. They got the Bears. They got the Vikings. And I think it might be the Bengals at home. The 17th is the best chance they have to win a game. Uh, winning the 24th in L.A. is going to be a nightmare. So I, that, the 17th is the one I got penciled in. Yeah, and Tom, you mentioned uh, the game against the Rams. I'm wondering how many Lions fans <laughs> are just agonizing over the fact that Matthew Stafford beats the Bucks and Tom Brady and uh, what the Rams could do, and how many of them feel that, hey, we can't support this team. Maybe we can support the former quarterback as he makes a run toward the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, with Matthew Stafford, it's, you know, it's a, it's that defining line. It's either or. A very polarizing player, uh, you know, for, for the Lions. Either love him or you hate him or frustrated with him. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think there's going to be some Lions fans who are going to start just adhering to other teams. Although the Lions fans are very, very loyal. But, you know, the, at halftime, Calvin Johnson's being introduced. and Yeah. You know, and then booing the, uh, the team owners out there. I mean, come on. I mean, the Lions fans are t- – that's a tough crowd, a rough crowd. And uh, I was disappointed when I learned about that. Tom, I don't know how many times you and I heard Rico Beard rant about Matthew Stafford and how he was the problem. Yeah. He was not the problem. Uh, he may not have been the complete solution. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Pat with the Holt Diamonddale Insurance Agency. Do you have horses, cows, or even llamas on your farm? With Auto Owners Insurance Company, we make sure that your life events and animals are protected. Call your hometown team today. This upcoming school year, there's a lot to think about. There's so much uncertainty. And you're worried about the quality of your child's education. You want to keep him safe and make sure his teachers are experienced with online learning. You're not alone. Great Lakes Learning Academy can help. Online learning may seem new, but Great Lakes Learning Academy has been educating students online for years, fully accredited and tuition free. When it comes to decorating for fall, Lansing Gardens has got it all. We're stocked with mums, mums, and more mums. Come in and check out our great selection. Embrace the season. Lansing Gardens, helping gardens bloom for over 100 years. Call it a sense of purpose, a higher calling, At Dean Transportation, we call it our passion. It's simply who we are. 60 years of pioneering the best health and safety standards because safe student transportation is essential. We are hardworking folks, connecting children to learning, schools to our communities, and you to a better career. Want to make mid-Michigan a better place? We'll put you in the driver's seat. Join the Dean family today and help to connect our kids to brighter futures. When you take a look inside Dart Bank, you'll find a banking experience like no other. You'll find that each of our banking offices are made of local people making local decisions. Even through these challenging times, our teams and lobbies stayed open, ready to help you through all your banking and mortgage needs when you needed us most. So if you're looking to upgrade where you bank, we invite you to come see our Dart difference. After all, we've been doing this for over 94 years. Dart Bank, for what matters most. At Graf Chevrolet in Okemos, you'll always get a great deal on a huge selection of high quality used cars and trucks. But you'll also get something else, peace of mind. Every Graf used vehicle purchase comes with up to six oil changes for the first two years of ownership. We'll also give you a free tire rotation with every other oil change. Always a great selection of used vehicles starting from $1,000 and up. Check them out at grafokemos.com. Lower your cost of ownership with our peace of mind program. Only at Graf Chevrolet in Okemos. Welcome back to Press Pass here on Fox 47. It's time for our Tracking a Trophy segment, brought to you by the Ticket Machine at the corner of Mount Hope and Hagedorn. For the best in sports and entertainment ticketing, whenever those events resume, visit Brian and his terrific staff at theticketmachine.com. Willie. 
Miguel Cabrera and Willie Horton and uh, Miggy and Willie been close for a long time. Jim Stark, uh, you spent a ton of time at Comerica Park. Uh, how cool was that celebration Friday night of Cabrera's 500th home run? And uh, is there anyone who could have meant more to Miggy than Willie Horton doing that unveiling? Well, it's been a long time since they've had some winning uh, excitement at, at Comerica Park, as we know, Jack. So this was a great, a great achievement. But when you look at Willie Horton, he's probably the best power hitter the Tigers have ever had. Certainly, Al Keon had more home runs, but you didn't think of him as a power hitter. Willie Horton was a power hitter. Miguel Cabrera was a power hitter. But look at the difference in the height, though. Can you imagine that Willie Horton was as good as he was and yeah. a foot shorter than Miguel Cabrera? That's just amazing to me. Yeah, it's about uh, eight inches difference in height. <laughs> And I remember when I did Tales of the Tigers dugout, I spent a lot of time with Willie. He told me that he learned how to hit by hitting bottle caps across the Jeffries Freeway when it was being constructed. Still can't believe that. And the guy who really got him into baseball, got him started when he was being arrested, was Rocky Calavito. Uh, he intercepted him and told the police officers, I got him. I'll take care of him. Took him into the visitor's clubhouse, got him a clubhouse job. and. And now here he is uh, representing the Tigers with Miguel Cabrera. Uh, Tom, let's take a look at the American League Central Division standings. Uh, Detroit now uh, 75 and 80. Seven games left. Could the Tigers still reach 500? It would take a 6-1 and one finish. And what would it mean for Detroit to catch or pass Cleveland? and finish second after a 9-24 and 24 start? You know, uh, it would be fantastic. But I'm telling you what, they could lose the rest of their games and this still be a really, really good year in my mind and way exceeding a lot of people's expectations. I think that, I, you know, everybody talks about this team culture thing, you know, in yeah. football. It applies in baseball, too. This team seems to like each other. They're, you know, they're fun to watch. They're, they've been Drawing some great crowds, although I was a little bit disappointed today. I thought they deserved yeah. some more fans. The Lions game had a lot to do with that beautiful day at Comerica. But no, what AJ's done, you know, this is a this is a this is a really, really prosperous moving forward, I think, for the Tigers. And I think there's gonna be some bona fide excitement when we come to opening day in 2022. Jim, let's take a look at the major league baseball playoffs picture. Uh, who plays in next week's wild card games and which teams will we see in the 2021 World Series? Well, I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Boston, New York, and the American League, uh, Jack. I, I think I think Tampa Bay's got that, that division pretty much wrapped up. Um, and, of course, uh, Toronto's still out of a game and a half behind, but I think it's going to be Boston, New York. In the National League, uh, I think it's pretty much all, all said and done with the Dodgers and St. Louis. Uh, nobody else really in the picture, but uh, but let's face it, uh, this has been a, a tough year for me prediction wise. I have not seen the guys that are making these playoffs that I had predicted. I thought I, I had a whole different li lineup of teams, uh, but it's going to be a great playoff because you got some big big team names in there and some great players. No one thought the Giants would be came over a hundred wins at this point and uh, winningest record in baseball. So Jim, who do we see at the end of October and the first couple days of November? Well, I'm still going to go with, with the Dodgers in the National League. I know that the, the Giants are a great story, but the Dodgers are the best team. Uh, I think a lineup they, wise, they get the, the hottest pitcher in Max Scherzer. I got the deepest pitching staff. I really like them out of the, out of the National League. And in the American League, I think it's, it's a crapshoot. I, I can't see uh, the Tampa Bay coming out again, but they could. Uh, but it, it really, it's a crap. I, I think you could really put either Tampa Bay, the White Sox, or uh, Boston. I think any one of those three could make it, but there's no clear favorite to me in the American League. Jim, uh, you've also been following the Ryder Cup, uh, giving your clicker a real workout here this week. <laughs> uh, it's a romp for Team USA at Whistling Straits in Wisconsin. What did we learn on the banks of Lake Michigan? 
Well, I thought it was a genius move uh, Steve Stricker did to take six rookies on this team. Uh, sure, he had uh, eight of the top ten players in the world, but by taking six rookies, he discarded a lot of that, that scar tissue that was on a lot of these older guys uh, from the past uh, failures. This year, they took off in the very first opening uh, uh, foursomes on the, on the Saturday, Friday morning, never looked back. This is the most dominating win they've had in my memory, and I think they learned, put the past in the past, and let these guys guys these, these, these eight of the ten best players in the world go wild and, they, and it worked we'll be back in just a couple of minutes and we're going to talk about history and memories of sports greats in the state of michigan and another team with a lot of promise one you're going to enjoy watching this winter Fall is here, and at American Metal Roofs, our schedule's getting tight. To get your new roof before winter, you must order now. This month, you'll save up to $7,500. Call 844-METAL-ROOFS today and visit AmericanMetalRoofs.com. Yeah, a win feels good, but you know what feels better? A better GM win. Whoa! Hitting overs, hitting unders, covering those spreads. Woo! That's how we do, baby. Now hold on a second. Now you're winning with the king of sports books. Let's go. Hey, Mid Michigan. It's time to cast your votes for the annual City Pulse Fox 47 News Top of the Town Awards. Bars, burgers, bands, and more. Vote for your favorite in over 100 categories. Go to fox47news.com and lansingcitypulse.com today. The world's first Avatar singing competition. Alter Ego, on your Wednesdays on Fox. Call it a sense of purpose, a higher calling. At Dean Transportation, we call it our passion. It's simply who we are. 60 years of pioneering the best health and safety standards because safe student transportation is essential. We are hardworking folks, connecting children to learning, schools to our communities, and you to a better career. Want to make mid-Michigan a better place? We'll put you in the driver's seat. Join the Dean family today and help to connect our kids to brighter futures. When you take a look inside Dart Bank, you'll find a banking experience like no other. You'll find that each of our banking offices are made of local people making local decisions. Even through these challenging times, our teams and lobbies stayed open, ready to help you through all your banking and mortgage needs when you needed us most. So if you're looking to upgrade where you bank, we invite you to come see our Dart difference. After all, we've been doing this for over 94 years. Dart Bank, for what matters most. At Graf Chevrolet in Oakmouth, you'll always get a great deal on a huge selection of high quality used cars and trucks. But you'll also get something else, peace of mind. Every Graf used vehicle purchase comes with up to six oil changes for the first two years of ownership. We'll also give you free tire rotation with every other oil change. Always a great selection of used vehicles starting from $1,000 and up. Check them out at grafochemist.com. Lower your cost of ownership with our peace of mind program. Only at Graf Chevrolet in Okemos. Welcome back to Press Pass here on Fox 47. It's time for our Take It to the Bank segment. Brought to you by Dart Bank. Dedicated to meeting the needs of our banking community for more than 90 years. With four convenient locations in Mason, Holton South Lansing, Grand Ledge, and the expanded Home Loan Center in Frandor. That's Dart Bank for what matters most. One of the questions I get most often when Jim Stark is a guest on The Drive with Jack is, what is the Michigan Sports Legacy Conservancy? Jim, why don't you take a minute and tell us? Well, Jack, our story began when the old Tiger Stadium Conservancy down in Detroit was formed in 2009 to promote the preservation and the history of the old Tiger Stadium. They couldn't save the stadium, but they were successful in assisting the Detroit Police Athletic League in developing an athletic field that mirrors the layout of Tiger Stadium. When their work ended in 2017, we shared with them our vision of creating a statewide sports legacy preservation organization and the Michigan Sports Legacy Conservancy was born. Our first event was in January of 18, when we produced the uh, Legacy Forum for the Michigan High School Coaches Association annual clinic right here in Lansing. And it featured three of the winningest high school coaches in history, John Harrington, Al Fricasse, and Tom Mack. And of course, it was hosted by our friend, the Venerable Fred Human. We also carried on the vision of the OTSC to preserve the heritage and legacy of Tiger Stadium by working with PAL to design two commemorative showcases and assist in the creation of their donor wall. Our Sports Legacy Interview Series, which helps us learn the life stories of some of our greatest sports contributors, has included such luminaries as Len Barney, Greg Kelser, and Jerry Green. 
In 2019, our foundation fund was established to support and promote physical activity for youth through athletics and fitness. And with the advent of the catastrophic COVID pandemic, we pivoted to providing grants to area high schools to support safe athletic participation. Since then, we provided 10 schools with grants to help defray these COVID-driven costs for safe play. As the COVID crisis continues, we plan another cycle of grants throughout the school year. To support these so everyone can play grants, we are embarking on a fall fundraising campaign that will include social media activity, direct appeals, and other creative programs designed to reach as many potential donors as possible and help us raise the money we need to keep the MSLC moving forward. Right. Uh, Tom, uh, it is also a time of year to honor Hall of Famers and uh, want to take a look at the class that was honored over the weekend with Michigan State and uh, the 2021 Hall of Fame class, wrestler Franklin Gomez, uh, runner Anthony Hamm, golfer Lynn Jansen, uh, Liz Schimmick, you might recognize her, Elizabeth Meganberg. Uh, Flora Ripma, Charles Rogers, of course, the late Charles Rogers, and uh, hockey goalie Ron Scott, the one who really got Ron Mason's program going. But there's another name there, Tom. Uh, Carol Hutchins looks a little different. <laughs> yeah, Carol Hutchins, who is now, you know, coaching softball, national champion Carol Hutchins, Big Ten championships a galore for the Wolverines. Carol's been a great, great coach for the Michigan Wolverine football and I mean basketball and of all of all sports I mean basketball football it's actually she's probably the best coach there is I and mean, Juwan Howard talks about that Brady Hokey used to talk about that and so I I you know I, I she's from Lansing Everett High School if I'm not mistaken yeah. um so uh a, a, a great legacy uh, that she's had in Michigan softball for the Wolverines and uh, two sports stand out at Michigan State, including part of a national championship team. That's hard to remember. AIW champion back in 77. And uh, this Friday night at Motor City Casino, Tom, uh, the class of inductees for the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame and some great names, uh, Chauncey Billups, Calvin Johnson, Shane Battier, uh, Jordan Weber from DeWitt, uh, Pete Schmidt, uh, Vokamas and uh, Tom Kowalski, among others, another great class. Yeah, and Chauncey Billups was just a classy, classy athlete. I mean, I, he's going to go down in my mind as one of my favorite all-time Detroit sports athletes and uh, and an NBA champion as well. And so I'm I'm glad that he's on that list. And Jim, when you think about Chauncey, hey, we got the Pistons, and uh, they got media day tomorrow. Really looking forward to where I think it's going to be a great season. We'll be right back with our weekly award. When you take a look inside Dart Bank, you'll find a banking experience like no other. You'll find that each of our banking offices are made of local people making local decisions. Even through these challenging times, our teams and lobbies stayed open, ready to help you through all your banking and mortgage needs when you needed us most. So if you're looking to upgrade where you bank, we invite you to come see our Dart difference. After all, we've been doing this for over 94 years. Dart Bank, for what matters most. At Graf Chevrolet in Oakmouth, you'll always get a great deal on a huge selection of high quality used cars and trucks. But you'll also get something else, peace of mind. Every Graf used vehicle purchase comes with up to six oil changes for the first two years of ownership. We'll also give you free tire rotation with every other oil change. Always a great selection of used vehicles starting from $1,000 and up. Check them out at grafochemist.com. Lower your cost of ownership with our peace of mind program. Only at Graf Chevrolet in Okemos. Anyone who's had our chicken knows it's plump and juicy. What they may not know is that it's also 100% natural. All our chickens are certified humanely raised, no antibiotics, on a high quality diet of soy and grain. Why are they called tenders? They're called tenders because they come from the tenderloin to the breast, hand trimmed just for colors. It's not a strip or a finger, it is the true tenderloin. I'll put our chicken tenders up against anybody's. That's like my Granny Franklin used to make. That's outstanding, Craig. Welcome to Delicious. Catch live with Kelly and Ryan weekdays at 9 right after Fox 47 Morning News. I'd say the most common concerns are, is it safe? How is this going to affect my body? How is this going to affect um, the rest of my health moving forward? I always tell people that these vaccines are studied to be safe and effective. They have gone through a rigorous process in order to make sure that they are safe and effective. I would never, as a healthcare professional, recommend you get something that I didn't feel was safe for you. 
It's your decision. It's safe. It's time. Welcome back to Press Pass here on Fox 47. It's time for a cool and smooth segment brought to you by four great Culver's locations in mid-Michigan. Oakham is north and south, North Lansing, and West Lansing. Since 1984, Culver's has been delighting guests one meal at a time with scrumptious butter burgers and premium frozen custard. Swing through any Culver's drive through and grab your fresh favorites. That's Culver's Welcome to Delicious. In between quarters, this young man to win a car and, oh, hang in there. Long day. And the- <laughs> oh, God. Guys, I don't know how that ranks with the Ohio State drum major uh, doing a somersault, uh, trying to lead the band out at Ohio Stadium. Uh, I don't know how that compares with Conor McGregor's first pitch, uh, which nearly killed two people in the stands. And uh, now this, uh, you know, I get it. It's uh, sometimes you get amateurs and uh, all right. Uh, Team 417, who has been as cool and smooth as a Culver's mid-explosion this week? Uh, What do you have for us for a team of the week, Jim? Well, it's got to be the Ryder Cup team, Jack, uh, with the, with the shellacking of the European team. But I think you got to look at Steve Stricker for the way he created this team. Yeah. Somehow he got Brooks uh, Kepka and Bryce DeChambeau to get along for the whole week, which was in itself a miracle. And of yeah. course, uh, it all resulted in, in, in a great result for the team. But uh, but the way this team performed as a team in an individual sport to me is amazing. Makes a lot of sense. Tom, what do you have for our play of the week? I can guess. Well, can we go back to that amateur kicker for Michigan State? You know, <laughs> let, let's make that the play of the week. No, I'm kidding. I can't even watch that thing. It's bad. Justin Tuck, we got to go with the, we got to go with what we saw today historically, the longest kick in the history of the NFL. And, all, you know, it was like a made for TV or bad movie on ABC or something, you know, where you have the ball bouncing around the rim and now it's bouncing around the crossbar. It's going to break the Lions, as what I'm fearing so it's going to be not only a the play of the week it could be the play of the year in a negative way for the Detroit Lions did you know Tom that Justin Tucker is a professional opera singer in the wow I I I didn't know that Jack 60 minutes did a piece on him away from football absolutely astounding all right time for our players of the week and there are many and I want to start with uh, a one-of-a-kind Spartan, Carl Buck Nystrom. We lost him yesterday, and uh, there you see him ah, getting ready to coach an offensive lineman. Not only was he captain of Michigan State's 1955 team that won the 56 Rose Bowl, uh, he's been one of the great coaches. He was also an academic All-American. And uh, one of Tom Izzo's great influences up at Northern Michigan, Buck Nystrom, will be missed. But there are many more. And when you think about Jaden Reed and what he has done now, here you see what he did against Nebraska, doing a lot of different ways and for the season. And he's now emerging as a candidate for the Paul Horning Award, uh, somebody who excels as a a receiver and a kick returner does a lot of things. So uh, he is making headlines with that. Uh, Matt Coglin, thank goodness, he didn't kick at all like the guy we saw at the beginning of this segment. But there you see Matt when he came to Michigan State and the guy now, and he must think the guy to the left there is his little brother, uh, not the Michigan, Michigan State little brother. That guy looks like he's about 12. And one of the highlights yesterday, uh, without question, was a tribute at the beginning of the game honoring Mike Sadler, Sam Fultz, and Mylon Hicks. And there was a special coin that was flipped honoring Mike Sadler with the Spartan head and uh, Sam Fultz from Nebraska. Now there's a trophy that might someday um, – a legacy trophy. I've seen it. It's beautiful. But the way that these players were honored, absolutely fabulous yesterday. I want to thank Jim Stark, the Michigan Sports Legacy Conservancy, and Tom Crawford. (laughs) 